Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Michael Shea, Transworld Business Advisors, and I'm here with Paul Robinson. It is July, what is it? 19th? 14th. 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 So as you can tell by his funny little accent, um, <laughs> Paul is, is from England. And what's different on this uh, recap is Paul is still in England. So what we wanted to do is go through the trials and tribulations of a COVID business acquisition <laughs> yeah. um, through COVID, with COVID, in COVID, and navigating the visa process. So Paul, give a quick intro to yourself. Keep in mind, we got about 30 minutes for this. So um, don't get off yeah. tangent talking about English soccer. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that, but uh, thanks for the reminder. Yeah, good afternoon. And uh, thanks for the video, Michael. So yeah, so brief introduction to me. I, I, my name is Paul Robinson from the UK, um, been in the corporate world for 27 years, um, decided that um, me and my family wanted to change. We love Florida. We have, love everything that has to offer there. We already own a home there. So we decided that actually we would reach out to you, Michael, which seems like forever ago. We, but we actually met in January 2020, um, Panera Bread. Yeah, my, um, my one of my many mobile offices. Right? Yeah, yeah, Panera Bread, Champions Gate, and we met there, and we um, we had a great connection, and 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 everything was really on. Uh, fast forward, you know, we were we knew what we wanted to do, and we were hoping everything was going to happen, and then we came away from there, and disaster struck in terms of the whole COVID world, and and basically stopped everything in its tracks, and. Um, yeah, it feels like we've known each other for quite a while now, but we've actually, in reality, only just got over the line in the last few weeks. Yeah. Um, so, so we were just like COVID starting. There were rumor mills. The yeah. shutdown happened March. March, yeah, literally weeks after we returned. Yeah. Right, and then, uh, and you and I had actually been communicating online. Previous. Yeah, previous to that. That's right. Yeah. Um, so we hooked you up with Lisa Khan, obviously yep. on the visa front, we had to do an E2 visa for you, but you correct. also, hit, you hit a second storm was there was no inventory. That was correct. Yeah. I think, um, if we think back to now, I was thinking about this, this, this actually, the business that we, we've, we've actually purchased was the fifth time really that we were, we spoke over various different things and, you know, we were looking at things. I think, um, you know, I think. We were so eager. We was looking at anything. We were looking at pools. We were looking at property management. Then we were back to pools. Then we were back to property management. And um, if you remember, the the lack of inventory made it really difficult. You know, I was reaching out to you. You were you're saying what about this? And you were saying that's not right for you. And and you know it was which was correct. And then I think um, we we found something in let's, August. If you let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Were you starting to feel desperate? I think um, we weren't starting to feel desperate, but we were starting to worry that the inventory that was coming online was going as quick as it was coming in. So it was it was almost, what do we want to do? How quick do we want to get there? But but you you we did get under contract. It's been so long, but we did get under yeah. contract. But then the seller got sick, and the seller got tired of waiting. That's right. Correct. And be, and yeah. you know what. What some people don't understand, I think inside that was some of their bookkeeping was bad. Um, yeah, yeah. Your your CPA kind of went AWOL for a little bit, which is always that's right. Um, and you know what? Sometimes buyers don't understand is we got to corral seller, buyer, accountants, attorneys. You know, to, just to get through the due diligence process, and then Correct. when you add the visa to it, the unknown. Because that was one of the things the sellers sellers at the level we're talking businesses under three hundred grand, which most visa yeah. buyers do. And this was common way back in two thousand six. There was a similar similar market condition mm -hmm. where there wasn't enough inventory, and sellers weren't willing to wait. At least in six, we could kind of go. We know what the embassy is doing. When COVID hit, we had no idea what the embassy Correct. was doing. And then when we finally, so you lost the deal, got the escrow money back, we found another deal. And then, um, oh, Uncle Joe shuts down Shenzhen. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. I, exactly. I remember that because I was at my mother's house after post-op surgery. And that's I right. To your visa attorney, your visa attorney emailed me at 9.30 U.S. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, uh, that's I, correct. But to her, I go, all right, it's three o'clock in the morning. He's not awake. I'm not going to yeah, yeah. break his heart at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we did have a call the next day. So let's talk about that. What happened there? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously everything changed again. I mean, I mean, if you think about the obstacles we've had, had put in front of us throughout the whole journey, really. But yeah, we shut down. There is no NIE anymore. You you know, the, the delay in the visa process. And it, and again, it was just another knockback for us. And, and it was almost right. OK, what do we do? But, but actually, it was all about staying calm, speaking to you, speaking to Lisa. What do we do? Let's just take that next step. But again, it, it gives you a lot of uncertainty at the time as well. And you start to question. Well, not just for you. The seller had some uncertainty too. Seller, yeah, the seller. And the seller had been great with us. You know, Nud had been brilliant with us. And But again, we had to then reset, all speak again. And was it the right thing for the seller? Was it the right thing for us? Come together on it. On yeah, I think I, I forgot about that. So when we got, and for those not who watched this, who didn't know, when Paul said NIE, under the Trump administration, there was a national interest exemption during COVID where you could come and go because there was obviously there's an economic impact to a small business yeah. purchase and exit. And then I think it was, well, I, I was it trying to remember so, was, when, when the, when, anyways, probably five months ago. Um, it was March. It was March. Right. It was March. This bizarre edict came out from the State Department shutting down um, basically England, Ireland, and then Northern, Eastern, Northeast, Northwestern Europe, right? That's correct, yeah. And, you know, basically nobody could come and go, you know, unless yeah. you wanted to travel through war, war-torn Sarajevo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the Underground Railroad, so to speak, to, to find your way in. Um, and we had to go back to the seller and apprise them of this reality and go, look, this is what we're dealing with. And, and fortunately, the seller understood because they were European. They, they got it. Um, and a, a little takeaway note for that, you know, Paul alluded to that there was a lot of competition for deals. And the seller actually took you guys over another couple because he liked you better. And even yeah. though the guy <laughs> theoretically could close faster, it was more, yeah. it's very common that people, you know, if you're a buyer of a business, goodwill matters, particularly yeah. when you're navigating the immigration process in the current environment, you have to find people who are trustworthy, you can work with, um, and there's a lot of faith extended. You put the controls in place, but you got to trust people and work right. with them. So we have to inform him and thank, you know, we did some, we, yeah. we we did some amended contract language and stuff like that, but then June comes along and you know yeah. we closed right and we closed and the yeah. operating the business for you from there and then you're coming over you're coming over when we come over in five weeks so we again because of the, the the current travel ban we have to go through Mexico so we're going through Mexico for two weeks so we're going to Mexico for two weeks then we're flying to Orlando hey, um, and I'm then. Sure. I got a picture to show you. Uh, my cousin yeah. is in Mexico right now. Um, I'm not sure you can see this. So I can see, that. Oh, wow. see the guy okay, next to wow. Yeah, I can see that. I look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, so okay. My cousin is vacationing in Mexico, so he's getting back on the plane to come back in, and he's sitting next to a guy. I mean, you saw that guy in the, in the white. I saw place. that, yeah, yeah. I saw that. That's some funny crap. Um, wow. Yeah. It, it's, it's, wow. You know, where you're you know, a little overboard. It'll freak your children out when they're coming through, you know, Chipotle yeah. or whatever. But we're, we're at that stage now where we will do what we need to do to get there. And, and the reality is, we're going to come in. We've got a few things to set up over there bank account, you know, getting our daughter in school, getting the house back to how we want it. And then we're still going to have to fly back for the E2. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to fly back for the E2. And we've taken that decision that let's just get ahead and do as much as we can before we get back for the E2. Because when we get back from the E2, we're straight into it. Now, it's a little different for you that other visa buyers wouldn't have to, that you don't have to navigate some of the stuff. No. Other people do. You've already got a house here. You already yeah. have a corporation because you had a house here. 
yeah. which you run in taxes through. So you already have a bank account. Um, yeah. We have the EIN numbers. So yes, when, when people come in, you know, they're trying to navigate this process and they don't have any of that stuff set up prior to COVID. Um, there's yeah. any timeline challenges. So those are just extra variables. So, you know, and the odd chance that somebody's watching this as a business buyer, mm. the buying of the business really isn't the problem. You know, no. it, it really is the least of it. And the visa is not the problem. It's, the, it's no. the little governmental stuff that you have to do sequentially in order to be functioning in the States and run the business. Yeah. So in your case, you've got a bank account. When you get over here, you could yes. set up merchant services and just have it rolling. rolling. Yeah. When someone comes in from the UK and they, you know, they buy the business, then they get the closing docs, then they can go set up the DBA. That takes time. Set the fictitious name up. Yeah. That takes time. Set the bank account, but you can't do the bank account until you have the EIN. So, yeah. you know, if you hadn't had any of that, we yeah. probably wouldn't be able to get you to come through Mexico or, you know. That's right, yeah. So That's right. some of it did work. There was some workarounds that made it workable. Um, yeah. But yeah. What other what other lessons learned did you discover? I think um, I think I think things that we've we've learned about ourselves really is put the trust in you, put the trust in in, in you, the broker. You, you know, you've been brilliant to us. You know, I think in the early days when we were starting to panic, thinking, you know, what's next, what is out there, and I remember, if you remember, I'd be sending you things and going, what about this, what about that, and you'd be like, no, that's not right, or this, and and it was putting the trust in you that you know you helped us along the way, you found us the right business, but I also think as well, the thing it's been ready to to react and and move with things. If I remember the the business that we've purchased, if you remember. I think you sent me it and I was literally like replied straight away, set up a call. Yeah, set up a call. No, yeah, no. I mean, two things happened. One was you were getting a little, so when people are searching, right? Yeah. Sitting in the UK and I'm saying no. Yeah. So, you know, what Paul's not sharing is that when you as a buyer look at a listing, you get 500 characters and three lines of yeah. financials. You don't get to see. No. You know who's listing it. What is it? Does it have the tax returns? Because sometimes the brokers will say, "Yeah, it's visa doable," and I'm like, "There's no freaking way based upon yeah. what I'm seeing." And then I think you know you've watched my YouTube channels. There's some stuff about comps yeah. and data and information. Yeah. We try and educate the buyer up, but you're not getting enough data. So no. what was happening was Paul would literally use Facebook Messenger, send me a message, and I could go yes, no, and click yeah. order. And then when I got the listing. You were the first phone call. I didn't even yeah. put it on the market. I, I yeah. Facebook. I think I was in yeah. when I met him. I was in the Panera Bread at Celebration, my other office, yeah. not the one at Chan. Yeah. <laughs> and while I was sitting with them, I messaged you. Yeah. Um, and he was like, "Holy crap, that's not normal." By the way, so I don't want yeah. anyone watching this thinking that that's no. normal. You kind of been in the queue. Maintain. Yeah. You were you were always on top, maintaining connections, talking. It was just messenger. You were just using WhatsApp yeah. or yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Facebook to stay connected. So you were top of mind. So when something presented itself, yeah, um, we were able to kind of pull the trigger fast. Absolutely. And and I think also as well, it's the um the one thing we did in all this time was research. So we were watching the YouTube videos that you 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 don't, you know, and I've watched all your YouTube videos. So the ones where, you know, going back where you're talking about property managers and the whole industry. I've been talking about when you, I watched the lawn videos, the pool videos. You know, I've watched them all. I've Actually, watched the, the first time I talked to you, I was driving to 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 Melbourne. This yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah. And you listened to a SoundCloud. That's video, right. Yeah. Or a yeah, SoundCloud that's right. clip um, on how to buy a business or something. And I'm like, people yes. actually listen to that crap. Yeah, uh, that was me. But it's point. It, it's important for buyers to consume as much information as they can. It's like if you're sitting in the UK, right? You're stuck in, in lockdown. Yeah. There's stuff you can do. And Definitely. you should just listen to Mike. You should be consuming every bit of data you can so yeah. that when you're getting here, you're that much faster. Correct. Right? And 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 it and as a buyer, you you have to position yourself to brokers. So you know, what buyers don't understand is we screen you. Hmm. If and, and some brokers don't want to work with buyers that's too much work. But if you've done the legwork on the front end and gotten yourself educated, yeah, 
then you're it's that massive. much easier to navigate because on visa buyers, there's a lot of handholding. It's like, yes. Hey, guess what? Do you know what a fictitious name is? Do you know how to get to the state department yeah. website? Do you know how to set up a corporation? Do you have a CP? You know, yeah. And a lot of that it isn't done. And, yeah. and rightly so, because you're coming from another country, we have to translate. And that's not a euphemism. We literally have to kind of teach within the confines of what we can legally. Yeah. Um, without you hiring a CPA and getting billed by the hour and running it, you know. Yeah. So the videos and the yeah. content that's available and Google can tell you everything. It's all out there. Yeah. You just have to do that yeah. in education before you get here. But the videos and the sound clouds are really good because you can just watch them over again. And, and and that was what we do and and what we did. And and even things like educating ourselves by watching your videos with Lisa. And then you did that video with Matt as well. And it, and it was literally just going over everything. And, and what we did were we were able to educate ourselves on the E2 visa process and the delays and how it was all panning out and what was happening. So it was it, it was very clear to us by the time by the time what we by the time we've closed on the business, I feel more educated, miles more educated than I did. It certainly in the early days. Awesome. And I think everybody who's contemplating the visa knows there's chat rooms and, and there's yeah. rooms. I mean, you've told, I've messaged you and go, what are you hearing? Yeah. Because, yes. you know, you're tuned into the BBC or whoever, you know, yeah. this is saying I'm getting sped, you know, fed spoonfuls of information from CNN and whoever. Yeah. And I'll call Lisa because Lisa's got her back channel. And then what we try and do is piece it all together to get some semblance of sanity. So you would actually tell me stuff. And then I would send yeah. it to Lisa and go, does this sound right? And she goes, yeah, that's what I'm hearing on my end. Yeah. In, in the state, that, you know, inside the embassy. So, that's right. And then what, what the, the buyers need to understand is like an attorney like Lisa Khan actually speaks to the embassies. <laughs> She's yes. talking to the yeah. people in the bowels of the organization. So when you're hiring your visa attorney, make sure that person is connected. Nope. Not just what they, hey, I've got a degree from freaking Brown University. And yeah. I, I'm an immigration attorney. You should just yeah. listen to me like the gospel. They need to get shit done. <laughs> and they yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And then you mentioned Matt Bell. That video Matt does talks about mistake expat buyers. Yes. Made, um, yes. And how, you know, it's not the business. It's not acquiring the business. No. It's the cash flow. Have you concerned yourself with enough? Do you know how to file your use taxes? Do you know how to pay your tourism taxes? Yeah, and whole you know, and he can go into the whole you know education thing on that. So if you're in property management, linking up with the CPA before you arrive, then you're up and running because you're not you're not learning because right. well, when you get here, you're going to be swinging your elbows and running just to take care of customers. That's right. Yeah, and yep. if you have all the back office stuff done that's not generating revenue, you're you're able to you know hit the ground running, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. And certainly the, the, the bit that stood out for me with, with Matt was, and again, we had to consider this because if you remember the, the initial business that we were getting was a lot, it, it, it was, it was a lot cheaper than the one that we're, we're going now. So we had to take that into consideration as well. It was, far, that it, was far, it was far smaller. And there was far more smaller business. Yeah. Much smaller business. So we, you know, but then when we saw this and yeah, we had to stretch a little bit more, but we wanted that bigger business. You know, everything looked great with it. Um, but then you have to look at the financial side of things and go, well, where does that leave us? And what does that look like for when we get there? Because, you know, that we've got if to you, consider all that. If you didn't have the house already here. Yes. You probably couldn't have pulled the trigger. And what we're, what no. we're, we're silently referring to is, and Matt talks about this, is the, cap, the importance of having cash flow. Yes. So I'm now seeing, and I just did a deal last week, not my client, but from Columbia, where the landlord hit the guy for 16 months rent in advance. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the sell, the buyer actually pulled the trigger because yeah. there's no inventory. Yes. And they right. were from Latin America and I didn't speak Spanish. So I was, you know, I, I, I was walking into a Panera at Waterford yeah. Lakes, my <laughs> office, and I saw them outside. Their broker wasn't there and they called me over and I, I, she's like, I want to buy a coffee shop. And I went on this whole tangent of you're going to get destroyed by the landlords. Yeah. And you're not having to deal with that because yours is a home-based business. But, you know, the guy was buying a business for his wife. She wanted to have her dream and she wanted to run a coffee shop. And I'm like, you're not in Columbia, you're in yeah. Orlando. And yes, everybody yeah. loves coffee, but, you know, dreams can be expensive propositions. And then, 
you also have to worry about how the landlord's going to deal with you and what that's going to do to your cash position. Because again, you don't have a credit rating when you get into the States. No, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You know, we've had to think about all that as well. And we've we've been researching how we do that and how how we can go about that. Yeah. And 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 even when you talk about the houses, you know, the thing that we've seen with the houses is that the inventory is not there with the houses. They're, they're going as quick as anything as well. So we're right. glad we, we don't have to have that worry over our yeah, I mean, get there. I mean, you used to be able to get houses in Davenport pretty reasonably, but what you're going to see is people pushing further, further west because that's where the open yes. ground is. So Winter yeah. Haven, Polk, where I moved to, Lakeland, you're going to see, yeah. you know, I, I anticipate a lot more. Ex there's a couple here. Yeah. There's a couple, yeah. very few. Uh, there's a British guy here. Zoe Adams, who's well known to people. If people, yeah, I know. So, I, I know Zoe. I've spoke to Zoe. Zoe, Zoe, yeah. her husband cleans my pool. They have a great pool yeah. company here. But yeah. They live in Lakeland, which is forty minutes west of where you are. So they yeah. moved. They moved almost, you know, closer to Tampa than than Orlando. Um, yeah. I think, I think expats are going to start exploring things a little bit further west, just because the housing component of trying to have affordable housing. It's interesting as well on the housing because the. Um, the girl that we bought who was who sold us our house and she keeps messaging me all the time saying i've got a cash buyer for your house do you want to take it yeah and i'm like no, where do you go? no i can't yeah it's like where do i go so i'm like no 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 we're coming over you know we're coming over but i i can i can also see that the demand is so high but i'm just glad we're in that position where we can walk over when we could come over and we um could just get move straight into the house without having that worry over our shoulders. I mean, your yours is one of those perfect ones where you've 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 you're working right where you where your business is, and that's kind yes. of the deal. Um, I yeah. think generation on the next swing is going to have to be a little bit more geographically flexible with where they live. Um, yeah, because of the cost. Of, I mean, I sold my house in a day. Yeah, thirty thousand yeah. dollars higher than what I listed it at. Um, yeah, and and uh, I'm glad I did it, but you know I've got neighbors who would like to do it, but they can't because where are they going to go? Where do you go? That's it. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, yeah, about correct. The, right. That's a, uh, my financial planner dialing in, wanted to talk to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, all right. So, what are the lessons learned? Wrap it up. I think lessons learned. Do your do your homework. Be be well prepared. Do your homework. No, have an idea of what you what what business you want to to go into. Trust your broker. So find the right broker. Trust your broker. Um, That's not an uh, advertisement, by the way. You, you, no, it's not an advertisement, but it's absolutely it's absolutely right. And um, you know, you're putting particularly for us that you know when you're talking to somebody four and a half thousand miles away, you need to have trust in that person that they they they're looking out for you. They want to do that thing the right thing for you have that connection have that communication um you know be open to to other things as well i mean like i say we we went from pools to property management back to pools and ended up with property management so yeah um, again we we did that we were looking at that sector because of the the unique element of no yeah. the the businesses you know i did have a window cleaning business that was i don't know if i remember that's I, right yeah you, you pushed that, that to me as well dude i like this but you're like yeah that's 45 minutes in the opposite direction. Yeah, and that was so, correct, yeah. You know, because I was getting this feeling that you guys were getting frustrated. And, yeah. And I could really, see yeah. Simone very much so. Every time we do a Zoom call, she'd be sitting there leaning in, just <laughs> and on out, right? <laughs> um, ready for it, yeah. Ready yeah, for she it. Was she, ready. she was ready. So, yeah. all right. Well, um, when you get over here, we'll have dinner. I'll have you out to the house. You and the kids, they can swim in the pool. Um, yeah. You won't have Perfect. a lot of time. And then uh, thank no, you for looking forward to it. on this process. So do you want to tell everybody what your company is? Yeah, we are. Um, we are a property management company. Um, we're going to be based in uh, Kissimmee and, and, and Davenport area. Um, you know, we will be pivoting the business. The business is brilliant at the minute. Absolutely. You know, just looks after properties at the minute. We want to pivot it to do vacation rentals as well and um you know we will set up and, and hit the ground running from there yeah i would tell you go ahead and start taking your real estate course yes yes well michael you've already you've said that that is on simone's agenda already 
Yeah. So Simone, Simone is already thinking about that, and um, and you know, well, we will we will also look at um, branching hey, out to pulls. She can do it online. Yeah, yeah, I, she's all. Ifrec.com. Yeah, she's she's um, she's researching that already, and um, it's something we want to do. And and absolutely, I think the first, the thing for us, we just need to get there now. It's been so long in waiting, yeah. and you know, January twenty twenty. And then we'll be there. The, we'll be there in August. So All five right. weeks, actually, five weeks, we will be there. So looking right. forward to. It. All right, my friend. Thank you for doing thank this. I'll send yeah, you. Yeah, thank you, Michael. All right, bye bye.